Um, one of the participants in my, in my research, uh, uh, Luca, has worked uh, all his life uh, in, uh, as a researcher in a humanitarian organization. He has lived uh, most of his life in war zones, and when I met him, he told me the story of uh, his convoy being attacked and him watching uh, the trucks in front of him exploding. But that is not the story of courage uh, that Luca decided to share. The story of courage uh, that Luca chose was when he decided to become a father at the age of 50. <laughs> there is a courage that is unglamorous, that is not heroic, and that is uh, incredibly ordinary. And that is the courage that emerged uh, from my research. Uh, and I feel it's the courage uh, that can inform uh, our organizations today. My name is Alessandra Marazzi, and my research uh, is a grounded uh, theory that brings together the construct of courage and the construct of somatic awareness. Uh, so the awareness uh, of uh, body sensations uh, and the body in space. And I asked myself a lot of questions uh, because these two constructs uh, had, a, had a deeper, can you press the door? Thanks. Were very important for me and always fascinated me. They also had a very deep impact uh, in my life. My research is about living a full life, not necessarily a good one uh, or one that feels good because courage does not feel good. At least the courage that we feel inside ourselves. And in my research, what I was interested in was to give courage a voice that was not just the voice of our head and our stories, but the voice of our bodies. that has been uh, looked at in psychology. Um, but a complete framework is missing. There are a lot of characterizations, there are a lot of definitions, there are a lot of populations on which courage has been studied. Courage, as we know, is one of the 24 strengths of Seligman and Peterson. Just yesterday at the, at the, at the opening ceremony, I was counting and I think courage was uh, uh, only one other word was named uh, less, more than courage, and that was happiness. <laughs> and yet, yet, we do not have uh, this uh, full framework. It's not my aim uh, to provide a full framework, uh, but to add another possibility to courage, uh, one that is not about the courage we observe, uh, which may look heroic, uh, like my participant in war zones, uh, but a, um, a, a explore courage uh, through our lived and sensed experience. Courage has always fascinated me. <laughs> courage has always fascinated me. Um, I, I grew up living what I thought was a fairly ordinary life. And my biggest fear growing up was uh, to get stuck uh, in answering uh, a call for safety. Just before my research, uh, my life uh, went from ordinary to quite extraordinary. A failed marriage, a failed business. I was left completely broke. Um, with the business collapsing, my husband collapsed. And I had uh, two young children, barely toddlers, when I was diagnosed with uh, early stage breast cancer. For my friends, I was the embodiment of courage. But I did not feel courageous at all. I was lying in bed paralyzed by fear. How can this be courage? Now when I looked at my research, when I looked at what was emerging from my research, 
from the experience of these 10 participants uh, that went uh, through uh, a day of uh, somatic awareness practices uh, and embodiment of courage uh, and a day of sharing uh, and uh, reflecting on courage together. What came out uh, had a very high resonance with my own experience of courage. And that's why I say it doesn't really feel good. <laughs> it didn't feel good for my participants and it didn't feel good for me. And yet it's one of the most transformative experiences. Sorry, I keep... Okay. It's one of the most transformative experiences in our life. Courage is a movement. It's a wave with many waves inside. And those waves move us from... Um, a smaller version of ourselves uh, to a much bigger version. One that is not bounded, but one that is not, that is uh, in connection and in a relationship to something bigger. So courage is, uh, is highly transformative and it starts with responding to a call, a call for growth. Now many characterizations of courage um, seem to point towards the spark of courage being a threat. In my research, what came out is that courage is sparked by an opportunity, the opportunity of being a bigger, a bigger self. And when we answer that call, when we close, when we, when we answer that call, we are thrown into a tumble dryer of emotions. And we go from moving towards to moving through moving through fear, moving through emotions, the call for safety on one side, the call for growth on the others, and us in the middle, torn. And what moves us through are these micro choices, like in my case, waking up every morning, and one step at a time, putting my life back together. Hmm? These are the micro choices that we can make, and we make every day in our organizations. And the micro choices where I would like uh, to point uh, a bit of intention to, because they can move us to safety and we see what happens uh, in the world uh, when we react uh, uh, to fear. Or they can move us towards uh, something bigger. There is a moment uh, when these forces uh, pause and recede that we surrender. And all the participants in my research pointed exactly to this experience of emptiness and trust. It is in that emptiness that the seed of courage can blossom. Without that pause, we would not have courage afterwards. From that pause, what emerges is action. And that action can be fierce and strong, like taking like taking part in a kite surfing race, or it can be very subdued and silent. One is the yang of courage, one is the yin of courage. And funnily enough, in Chinese medicine, the gallbladder is the organ that represents, it's this side, that represents courage. And it's the only organ that is both yin and yang, exactly as in the experience of my participants. Actions does not turn us into courageous, or does not inform our sense of self as courageous at all. So what is needed? What can we take away from it? Reflection, co-reflection, and having someone who receives our story of courage, like you are receiving mine today, informs our sense of self. But this is not uh, the whole story about my research. This is the whole story. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's a beautiful story. But there are also other points that I would like to show you. Somatic awareness can impact that experience of the self as courageous, can impact our experience of courage. Courage lives in the body, lives in the open chest, lives in the tingling hands. Courage lives in the, not in the throat or the clench in the stomach. Courage is a somatic experience. 
And when I asked my participants to take the shape of courage, some of them stood tall with their eyes in the, on the horizon and their arms stretched and their chest open, the young of courage, the warrior, and some others were subdued with their eyes lower and lower than their gaze very soft and hands receiving the, yang, the yin of courage. When I asked them to represent courage, they pointed to what I call the centers of courage, the head for discernment, the throat for expression, the heart for connection, the navel for commitment, the hands and the feet for action. That's where, the co where courage lives in our body. But in order to listen to that voice, we need to slow down because somatic, somatic data travel much slower than the stories of our head. Do we have organizations that can slow down to the point that we can start to listen to the stories in our body, to the rhythm of our bodies? I don't think that today we have. I just want to leave you with, with one last thought. At the peak of courage, that moment of surrender, there is no confidence. There is only vulnerability. A vulnerability that we can hold to the extent that we consider ourselves as worthy and what we can accomplish in life as worthy. When we come so close and courage takes us there, our body takes us there to something so essential to who we are, what we find in my research, what we find is not an isolated self, but a self who lives in a relationships, in a relationship to others and in a relationship to the world. I thank you for, your, uh, for hearing me and I will take your questions later.